This mutation is called Bubble Pop and it is being played on Cradle of Death. We have three mutators active. We have Barrier, we have Mineral Shields, and we have Dimorph. So before I say anything, I just have to give props to Blizzard for naming this mutation because the naming is really clever. It's either the barrier, kind of looks like a bubble on top of the enemy units, and you have the mineral shields, which warm bubbles on top of the mineral fields, and then you have time warp, which kind of also is like semi doom like, so it also looks like a bubble. So, big props to Blizzard for the naming. Unfortunately, this mission I think is disliked with a passion from the rest of the community. You can see here, Renor has no SCVs. Where? Where are his SCVs? And you will probably realize his SCVs are just all gone, and that is because this is going to be a Kerrigan solo of this mission. And Raynor has actually floated his his guys over, and these this command center will be sitting right next to Kerrigan's Kerrigan's base here. So this will be a Kerrigan solo, and so let us have a look at the masteries. We're Raynor is not really relevant here, but we have Kerrigan who's going for 28 points in the Kerrigan NJ regeneration. 28 points into the mobilization wave and 28 points into the ability improvement mastery. So this is going to be very similar to this build is basically going to be relying on the Kerrigan hero unit a lot. So we're going to see how Kerrigan is going to be dealing with this. We already have a spawning pool and an evolution chamber coming down for Kerrigan, and these two are going to be very critical in getting Kerrigan's abilities ready and good to go because Karen will need her abilities as much as possible to start clearing this mission. This mission is very very difficult in the ter in terms of how much it harasses you so it is going to be a bit of a challenge for Karen to get up and running and being able to not only push the objectives but also deal with the harass waves that spawn in this mission. So we have already the, hero the heroic fortitude upgrade for Karen. And this upgrade is probably one of the more important upgrades for Kerrigan. This should be pretty much the first thing you get. This is the first thing that you should be researching with Kerrigan. It just provides Kerrigan with so much extra HP and just makes her a lot more rugged throughout the course of this mission. And now Kerrigan is going to be out and she is already going to start clearing. And you can, as you can see, this construct does actually get the barrier. So you can see that Kerrigan pretty much two shot that construct with her, her leap ability, which is really important. Just the amount of damage output when you get from Kerrigan when you're dealing with when you when you have that when you have these masteries is really really good. Kerrigan uses her slidey move and ends up pretty much killing out that attack web. We can see the enemy composition here is the classic infantry composition. There are a few bubbles right now on these mineral shields are there and now Kerrigan will start pushing in with the help of these two trucks. And these these trucks now her ally is just gonna be I think I think truck might be on follow from her ally. So that is okay. Her ally just gets to sit back and relax while Kerrigan does all the hard work. And you can see that's the first one there. Her ally is going to be moving the second truck to the second construct here. And Kerrigan will be using her slide able to basically one shot the Marauders even there. And that is basically the first area done. The first section has been cleared. The fight begins. I can see there's like 8 out of 9. I'm not sure what is going on there. I'm not really sure. But Kerrigan is already good to go. I think what happened is her ally left. That's what's happened. Okay, so her ally actually left the game. So Kerrigan basically has control of both these trucks. That's what happened. I was kind of curious to see why there was a mining number over here. But yeah, so Kerrigan's ally has left, unfortunately. Not gonna sit back and watch the show. So Kerrigan. He's basically all alone on Cradle of Death and all lonely and now Kerrigan is already getting ready to deal with this next attack wave and again this next attack wave will line up very very nicely. The Marines will probably be confused to know why there is no base here but Kerrigan is pretty much good to go and she's taking her hatchery as well here and yeah she's basically just gonna start pushing in to this next base and we have a bunch of mineral shields here that are being a little bit annoying. We have some more mega networks as well coming up for Kerrigan. And just that is going to help her a lot with getting her mobility around this mission. Because there are a lot of harass waves that will harass your truck. But they will also attack waves that go for your base. So it gets a little bit annoying if you do not have that kind of mobility. But Kerrigan is pretty much a great hero. And still, 150 seconds left on the immobilization wave. So she doesn't really have the luxury of getting that immobilization wave 
here, but again, she's just gonna instantly snipe out that siege tank. That siege tank has very high priority in target, which she has done. And now it's just gonna start working her way away on this little construct here. And you can see there's a random ghost here that is shelling away at Kerrigan and just jump straight in and just kill that ghost right through Cloak. Kerrigan's having none of that. And now we have the artifact trucks already, and we have the Omega Network here just to provide Kerrigan with a little bit of mobility for an attack wave that might inevitably hit her base here. So moving in, trucks moving forward now, and uh, there's a little bit of a pullback on the trucks for some reason, but Kerrigan wants to deal with the bonus objective. Is that what, is that what Kerrigan wants to do? Not sure. Kerrigan jump back into the Omega Network. We have some more Omega Networks on the way, and I'm not sure why Kerrigan is in the Omega Network just yet. I think it was just a temporary macro thing. Kerrigan is out now, and we'll end up deleting that attack wave as well, and using more slidey moves to kill more of those marines. And this is very inhumane for Amon, but Amon does not care. And Kerrigan now is going to be harassed by a random fire bat, and just gets back out again. Okay, so we have some more Mega Networks now on the way. Kerrigan spamming those Mega Networks, and now is going to go and try and re-engage the stack wave that is coming up towards her base. And again, we have some more gas being, being collected for Kerrigan. And where is this attack wave? There's the attack wave. Kerrigan has it in her sights. Now she just wants to line them up a little bit. One slidey move, two slidey move, three slidey moves, and that's pretty much the entire attack wave dead. And now Kerrigan is basically ready and good to go. And she is going to start pushing into this side. Just to, just to murder Amon, just to flex a little bit on Amon's forces. Puts down the Mega Worm as well over there. And now Kerrigan is back out now and is going to move her artifact trucks forward. And now she has her mobilization wave. Okay, so that is why she was actually stalling. She just wanted to get her immobilization wave ready. And you can see the jump in with the assimilation aura. And that immobilization wave pretty much one shot every single unit that is in that area. So all that is left now are the construct to clear. Some random Marines, but that is not really a big concern. Kerrigan will basically end up clearing that out. And now there's a harass wave that has dropped to try and take these trucks out. And they, were going to, they are going to realize what a huge huge mistake they made dropping right next to Kerrigan there. Kerrigan, again, some more slidey moves, and ends up basically deleting that harass wave. All that is left now is the other construct here. These SCVs have just popped out to see that there is just huge amounts of carnage in that area. And now Kerrigan will just use the, the leap to basically clear this last construct. And this is area number two cleared with solo Kerrigan. And if you might be thinking that Kerrigan seems to be having a very easy time dealing with Cradle of Death, is that you are not wrong, because Kerrigan, the Kerrigan the hero unit is pretty strong. I think a lot of people underestimate how insane the Kerrigan hero unit is, and this is basically a very, very nice showcase to show you how strong the Kerrigan hero unit is when it is playing to its maximum efficiency and you are paying attention to the abilities and getting the cooldowns, getting all the other stuff up. We have the ability efficiency upgrade as well now, already researched from Kerrigan. I don't know if Kerrigan has researched the chain reaction upgrade. Kerrigan has not researched that upgrade, I'm not sure why, it's just an extra damage boost for Kerrigan. It's not really, it's not a significant damage boost by any stretch of the imagination, but it is something here that does help. There's a random Wraith here that is harassing Kerrigan, but Kerrigan already uses her assimilation aura. A few more slidey moves to end up clearing this out. There's a hybrid here that is still with way on Kerrigan here. Well, one leap over here, pretty much take off half its HP, and the other one now will end up being cleaned out as well. But Kerrigan has basically cleaned out that small enemy camp on that left hand side and now we will go and engage this next attack wave and it ends up wiping out. One thing that's really annoying about this attack wave is it tends to split up when it comes up on this ramp. So the attack wave spawns right in the middle here and they tend to go up both ramps. It makes it really difficult to defend when you're dealing with some certain kinds of static defense like hand corners, magmines for example. You can see now harass wave has dropped here and Kerrigan will be working away on this construct. Constructs do have more HP as time goes through and as you deal with the layer constructs so it's going to take Kerrigan a little bit of time, even with her upgraded abilities and her masteries, to clear these monsters. And this one is going to be a little bit more difficult. But again, another immobilization wave jumps straight in. And you just see, like, pretty much everything is just dead right now. I think Ger I think there may be a few more units here. Kerrigan might have gotten a little bit more value if you jumped maybe into this area and use her her immobilization wave. I'm not sure, that, but there may be a few vultures over there that might have survived, I'm not really sure. Do note though that the range of the immobilization wave is slightly larger than the range of your camera. So if you are using immobilization wave, you are going to be dealing damage to units that are outside your vision range as well. I think you might have actually nailed that. That was actually really good. Okay, I was not expecting Kerrigan to have actually hit the 
hit the units in that area, but I think that has cleared out this entire this entire base, and there are a few phoenixes here. Air units are a little bit more difficult for Kerrigan to deal with, because she doesn't really have a very strong anti-air build. Like, her auto attacks are not very strong in terms of the anti-air, which is why I would normally recommend the chain reaction upgrade, because it does allow you to just chain this damage a little bit more to some of the air units. But again, it's not really a big deal. Kerrigan, I think a little preemptive jump back into the Mega Worm. Okay, the construct might actually end up surviving this. Phoenix now is wondering, where did Kerrigan go? I have no idea where Kerrigan went. Well, why did Kerrigan disappear? What is going on? Why is there why is there a beeping timer thing here? And you're soon going to realize that this entire area is going to explode just like that. I was kind of trying to stall that so it lines up with a little bit of an explosion, but that seemed to work out reasonably well. And now Kerrigan is ready to deal with this next harass wave, and luckily for Kerrigan, she's got on this side here, so the bottom right hand side is mostly ground units, the bottom left hand side is mostly air units and that can be a bit of a problem for Kerrigan, so Kerrigan a little bit lucky here in getting this side to deal with instead of the other side because it means that she will be able to clear out pretty much most of the units here. Now one thing that is kind of dangerous here is that there are a lot of siege tanks, there are a lot of pillars, there are a lot of anti-ground units there, so Kerrigan will be having to be careful and she'll have to micro a little bit to make sure she doesn't end up getting wrecked by the by the units there and she's gonna be moving her trucks forward and I think I think one of the things that will be a little bit difficult is trucks are pretty close quite down. Here you get already ready to jump in. It's just a bunch of doors here and the mobilization wave gets used here to just weaken some of these enemy forces and you can see this now the mobilization wave does not one shot a lot of stuff and unfortunately because Kerrigan doesn't have full mastery points she's only at level 84 those cyclones also did not get one shot they're sitting at a very low amount of HP they're pretty much they have no HP bars left but because that immobilization wave is not at max mastery it means that those cyclones are not getting one shot so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Kerrigan to clear and getting focus fired down by some of these cyclones. I'll try and see if, I'll try and see how much HP they have. There is a small harass wave that is dropping now to try and take out these con these trucks here. And oh, are these cyclones? Yeah, you can see this guy is like sitting at 17 HP right now. So almost dead. Science vessel sitting at 8 HP. So this is all would have been cleared if if Kerrigan had the, the mastery allocation. Unfortunately, the Kerrigan tends to line up with the harass wave and end up getting focus fired down by the bunch of marines here that have dropped. And remember, these marines will also have stim, so they will stim forward and they will try and attack you. And Kerrigan has to stall until the Kerrigan hero unit is out because this is going to be a Kerrigan hero solo. So she has to stall now these attack waves with her mega worms. How many attack waves does she have? How many, how many mega worms she has? She has 10 networks right now and these zerglings are going to start nibbling away onto Kerrigan's units here. It's not really too big of a deal. Kerrigan doesn't really care and since mineral shields also does not drop onto the Vespine geysers, Kerrigan has enough here. It's not really much of a problem. She only has to be careful because if she loses all her structures, it's going to be game over. She's wrapped up her allies' command center with her mega worms as well. She's trying to keep it all safe. There's another attack wave here. So that was a minor setback for Kerrigan, but Kerrigan will be able to clear that she has her mobilization wave ready as well and good to go. So she's going to be ready to deal with that. Dude, there's one random marine here. And you see, just because they tend to split, it just becomes really difficult to deal with it. Well, harassing some more phoenixes as well not sure what they are doing over here and now we have another harass wave that is coming up Kerrigan which paying attention to this now is going to be using her slime move you see the stim damage from these marines so these marines are absolutely insane now I remember when Blizzard modified the upgrades for Amon's units and they said oh but the marines are going to be getting stim and these zerglings are going to be getting adrenal overload or adrenal glands I think it's called the adrenal glands upgrade this is just following these trucks here. I'm going to do anything. And now another mobilization wave jumping in. But yeah, I remember when Blizzard said that we're going to be adding stim to Marines and adrenal glands to the Zerglings. A lot of people were like, eh, it's not going to make much of an impact. You can just see the amount of damage output here. Kerrigan getting attacked by that hybrid dominator. The plasma blast does end up hitting Kerrigan. So Kerrigan will have to be careful now. Make sure she doesn't end up taking too much damage. I think she might actually end up getting killed off by that plasma blast. And Kerrigan goes down for the second time here 
And remember that there's a lot of focus fire down. This guy does so much damage. It has one, it has two thousand vitality basically. So it's gonna be a while for Kerrigan to be able to come through. Units. Unfortunately, Kerrigan has also lost a good chunk of her overlords because those phoenixes basically killed off everything there. So she has only supply from her hatcheries, and now she has to put down some more Omega Wars to just stall this attack wave. Damage up with siege things on the back line as well. Kerrigan is gonna be out in about 20 seconds. Yeah, in about 20 seconds. 10 seconds left. And now again, she just has she just has to stall. Just make sure that these guys are not pushing through and killing off her structures. Kerrigan is out now, she's gonna jump through, and now the Marines will end up cleaning out the or Kerrigan will end up cleaning out the rest of these Marines. The rest of the siege tanks as well. I think Kerrigan has already dropped two mobilization waves here, so a good chunk of these units should be pretty much dead right now. So Kerrigan should be able to clean this up. The only thing she has to be careful of is the hybrid dominator's plasma blast. And one thing you can do to like annoy the hybrid a little bit is that when it tries to cast its plasma blast, you jump into the Omega Worm. And okay, so she does end up sniping out that one hybrid, and now she will end up cleaning up this hybrid as well. One new thing you can do is you can jump into the Omega Worm when the hybrid dominator is casting its plasma blast, and it'll cancel the order. So, you know, maybe leap onto the hybrid and then leap back into the into the Mega Worm because there's a charge up time that you can use to get away with that. And that is something you can do. I think all these Omega Worms are actually blocking these trucks, so Kerrigan will have to try and take one of these things out. And just leave the Omega Worm to... Yeah, I think I think these things are actually blocking the truck out. And I okay, Kerrigan is just going to be dropping some more of this. And again, another, another immobilization wave here. Kerrigan just wants to get the value of her immobilization wave, so she's gonna go back down to clear this out. The key is to use the damage from the immobilization wave to weaken the enemy forces in the area here. And now these trucks are basically free to go, so Kerrigan now is just basically gonna leapfrog her, her Omega Worms forward, and she's gonna start working away on these constructs as soon as these trucks get into position. This is one of the things that gets really annoying with this mission, is that you cannot play this mission unless you have the trucks available. And this is one of the reasons why this mission is not very liked in the community, is that it's just this mechanic where if you lose your truck, you basically have to sit around and do nothing. Kerrigan's gonna end up sniping off that one Thor, so now it's gonna be a while before Kerrigan is gonna clear these constructs. Now, fun fact is you don't actually have to clear these constructs. Because Kerrigan has access to both these trucks, Kerrigan can just move through and just ignore these constructs completely because they don't really serve much of a threat. Especially because you don't have an army even moving through. So Kerrigan just being escorted by these two trucks will be fine here. This construct, taking out this construct is pretty much the only option. Kerrigan's gonna even kill that one SCV. Oh no, he decides to have some mercy on that SCV. A few more Mega Worms jumping in here. And yeah, these constructs are pretty much cleared. There's one random tuna fish hybrid that's being a little bit annoying for Kerrigan. There's a tech wave now on the way. Kerrigan's going to even jump again. Slime move. She'd have to be a little bit careful because there is again there's gonna be a lot of damage output here. But she might be fighting in the range of these constructs, so that might be a little bit bad. Kerrigan now, one slime move, and there's another slime move, and pretty much everything else is now dead. A few more siege tanks left over, but Kerrigan is basically gonna use a leap. Just pretty much one shot the siege tanks through their barrier as well. Kerrigan is pretty much done now. She's gonna go back here and try and deal with this last bit of stuff. There are a few more constructs available. And again, so you can see the science vessel sitting about 6 HP. And now these trucks will be moving towards the next two constructs. Kerrigan has basically cleaned out this last two fish hybrid. And all that is left now are these two constructs that are pretty much undefended. And yeah, there's one random Thor that's trying to stop Kerrigan from executing her plans, but Thor will instead get executed and this last construct now basically left defenseless, helpless, and useless and this construct will be cleared out as well. There's one random marine still here harassing this one, one Omega Worm, but that is basically it. All the Mobius research facilities have been destroyed and Mobius' plans thwarted. That is GG.